one-handed bus wrapping. I am working on the eyebrow. I have to clean up this edge. You can see that the factory cut along here. That's not my cut. That crooked ass cut comes from the factory because it's buried down here. I understand it doesn't have to be particularly precise. It's buried down in the drip rail gutter there. But anyway, I will clean that up. I'll go over that with the sanding disc. I've marked the center. I've already cut out. It was too windy to really show that, but I cut out a piece of steel tall enough to go from here, tuck under to about here. And actually this piece of steel comes down to here right now. I'm going to have to scribe it and cut it because at the edge, it drops off like this. So the steel goes from here up to here. I'm going to hang it temporarily with one screw through the panel that I will put in a hole just to support the weight. And then I will use my magnets just to help align it side to side. And then I will go inside and scribe this edge so I can get that bottom curve cut very nicely. As far as measuring the width of this, I marked from the center using my Joann's fabric tape. I stuck it here yesterday with the magnet, but again, it was super windy, so I did not get a chance to videotape that. But I stuck the magnet here, measured around the corner. I think it was 53 inches on each side. So I cut this panel a little over 106 inches long. I hope my math is okay. By 17 inches wide, I'm going to hang this up right now and then scribe it. Yesterday, when it was super windy, I rolled these edges around a piece of pipe, and they are not exact, but that wasn't quite the goal yet. I can tweak these after I get it scribed into place, but it's pretty close. It's close enough I can scribe it. The weight is actually hanging on that screw there, and then these magnets are just there to hold it in position and keep it from rocking side to side. So we're pretty close. I'll go inside and mark the inside curve and then cut that, and then we should be pretty close to putting that in place. Here's the inside just hanging. And before I scribe this bottom, I wanna clean up the goo. So I'm going to do that and that'll give me a, a decent line at least to scribe to. It'll be sort of accurate. Now this line isn't very straight either, but it's going to be better when I get all the goo cleaned off it. I'll do the rest of this uh, off camera. It's hard to do one-handed. I have scribed a line, ignore the bottom one. So when I pull this up tight by reaching around the outside there, which I can't do because I'm holding a tape measure in one hand and the phone in the other. Anyway, when I pull that up tight, I realize now, I mean, I knew this, but uh, my measurement is that I need to cut about an inch below this line. This line here is roughly even with the top, but I want to be down below. Oh, can't see that under the drip edge, under the drip rail there. So I will take this piece off, mark a new line, a, a nice straight line about an inch below, maybe an inch and an eighth below this one. I can always trim from the top. And then once I mark that new line, cut that. We'll go outside now. So that cut was the majority of one zip disc. 
I've got that done. Pretty good curve. I will give it a test fit now. I've got this tucked in. I didn't clean this edge up yet. I need to do that still. I'll push it back and go over it with the sander. And I've got it tucked in on this side. I still have to do that side. And then I can tip the whole thing in and clean up this edge and start riveting. But I've got it wrapped around over here, tucked in behind like it should be, and it overlaps at the bottom. And then I'll end up, well, there we go. I'll end up trimming this. And like I mentioned in an earlier video, I will weld that up and sand it down. That will look just peachy. Anyway, I'll go work on the other side. I am uh, protecting the the top here if I stand on it just with an old, an old rug. All right, the driver's side is tucked in. I will do a little bit of trimming in here just so that this part sits down a little bit more into that drip rail, but it's looking pretty good, super close. So here's my new line, just to bring this down to here. You'll notice I left this long because I want that to run long. When I rivet, I will start in the middle and work my way over. And when I get up to here, it's going to pull it that way, which will pull this edge forward some. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Anyway, uh, it'll pull this edge forward some, so I don't yet know where this line will be. But once I do, I will cut that off and make it nice and clean. The trimming is done and that fits in nicely. So I've still got to clean up this, clean up this edge. Let me start over. I trimmed the bottom, took about a quarter inch off on that side and nothing over here. Just like the other side, this side's run a little bit long. And then once I get this gap filled by pushing and riveting the metal forward, then I will know how much to take off over here. So now the last thing to do is just clean up this crooked factory edge with the sander. I should have done that really before I put this in place, but now that I have fought it into place up under these uh, lips and everything, I'm not gonna take that out. I can just push in on it and get in there. I will do that off camera using the little, uh, the little sander. Pretty good. You're not going to get this perfectly straight. At least I don't think so. But kind of like drywall, you know, if you fare out the lumps over a long distance, then it looks smooth. And this is pretty straight. I was shooting my, my eye down it. I guess I might take a little bit more up here. But I also have to do a little dolly work. See how this rivet, it's kind of hard to tell. See how that one there is a little recessed. So I'll get behind it with the, the dolly, this side, and the hammer and give this edge a little bit of love before I do that. Sorry, I don't mean to be like going back and forth. I know that's annoying. I'll try not to be annoying. A spoon. So just did a little bit of touch up with the sander, get that edge as straight as I can. And then I went over it with the dolly and the hammer, did a little plenishing. And now just doing a last pass or just did a last pass with the spoon. So that edge is pretty good now. I've got some rivets in the bottom and now I'm ready to start putting some rivets up in the top. Down here, this is riveted into this framing member, part of the eyebrow. And up here I am installing, now that I've got this sheet of metal tucked inside, um, I've got this up here just temporarily. I will attach it and then put a brace across here just to prevent any oil canning. You see this is pretty flexible. So I wanna be able to rivet through the outer layer, through this new layer and into something solid. So first step will be putting in a couple rivets just for positioning. And then I can push all this forward. There's still, oh, sorry about the wire. There's still a gap here, which will work itself out as I push that forward and rivet towards the edge. And that will all get sucked up tightly. 
I have put in just some temporary bracing and clamped that into place. And you'll see how, as I push that forward, that sucks that corner up. Same thing over here. The next step is to put some rivets in on the top. And then from there, I can work myself, work myself, work my way across the bottom and the top. And yes, this corner over here wasn't perfectly rolled or formed, but that's not really critical. You don't have to get it perfect because when you rivet it in around the corner, once I get past the end of this, then these will get riveted with a washer on the inside. I am all prepared for that. So they'll be riveted in around the corner. That will suck that up very nicely down here. That already looks really nice. So the metal's flexible enough that as long as you're close, you can pull it up tightly. But you've got to start in the middle and work your way across. If I'd started on the ends or something, and it would be really tempting to put some rivets in here and there. But if I do that and there's any kind of a bow in the middle, you create a wrinkle and some stresses. So start in the middle, work out. I've got a row started at the bottom and working my way out from the center. Like I said, you always want to go from the center and work your way out. Just got the rest of those to do. And then this front is done. As I am working my way around the bottom, I actually have to drill from the inside out. There are holes in here. So I drill a quarter inch hole or slightly under a quarter inch from the inside. And then from the outside, I drill the proper sized hole angled up just a bit so I can get the rivet in easily. Just to keep this tight while I'm drilling, I kind of work my way down with these. And if I put them in this orientation, like that way, it clamps that up in place. And I'll drill these holes and I'll just keep moving around the corner. I really ought to count those rivets. There were a thousand rivets in that box when I started, plus 200 long rivets. And I'm about done. Just got this corner up here to do. A couple, couple rivets to put in here. And then a nice, uh, nice clean edge up, up there, sorry. Up there. Now that I am wrapped around the corner tightly at the bottom and up at the top, this edge won't sh uh, where's the edge? This edge won't shift anymore towards the front. So I made my cut. That'll create a nice joint. I can pull this piece out of there. Up. In fact, I'll do that right now. Got some of my 3M on it. Fortunately, it takes a few days for that to cure. I will fill this, rivet this into place, rivet this edge up here, back up so I can focus. Anyway, let's do that again. So I will rivet this into place after adding some more adhesive sealant, mark and rivet a nice row of rivets up here, rivet there and here. But before I do that, I will weld this just and flatten it out. And then this side is done. I keep saying this side's done, but it's little steps. If you counted all these rivets, you drive yourself crazy. So little milestones, but it's fun. Why is it none of you warned me I was going to make another mistake? I should have noticed the shape of the bracket there before I put the rivet in. 
I actually put the rivet in, started to tighten it. Now I've got to drill that out because this is where the side mirror bolts back on. Oh well, it happens. A little bit of welding to do up there and one more rivet. That's what she looks like. Ginger, come on. Come here. Wait, sit. 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 You're a good girl. You're a good girl. This, this is my wife. This is the other half, the best part of the team. Checking out the bus. Got a door to do. They're doing a single door here. Actually, that way. And there's the roof raise. Come on, Ginger, come. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, girl. came in the hands. Come on. Ginger, come here. Ginger, come. You don't want any part of that. Hello there. <laughs>